We've shared that one of the many perks of the land we're on was that it was a former nursery that had a pre-existing 12-acre deer exclusion fence. Unfortunately, however, that fence was broken in quite a few areas and was in need of repair. This past winter, we saw tremendous deer damage to most of the plants and no forest regeneration whatsoever. So we decided we would not only fix the fence, but also extend it into the forest to see if we could get more seedling recruitment. Now, our original plan was to extend it another three acres, but given it was so cost prohibitive, we decided to only extend it another 700 feet into the woods and then finish it off with a temporary fence. It was tough getting a commitment from the contractors, so we started to do some more DIY fencing in the meantime, but luckily they pulled through in December to do a solid fence build, which we'll take you through now. Okay, so today is the day we're gonna get our deer fence. Well, not the entire fence that we want, but a good section of it, so we have something to get started with. Because the entire fence that we want is a little too expensive to afford right now. So the guys showed up today and um, I'm actually really curious how they're going to build this because I have a few ideas from watching other YouTube videos on how to do this, but it'd be interesting to see the experts uh, get to work and see how they built this fence. Because hopefully maybe I could build the rest of it if I figure out how to do it. <laughs> what we did first is we prepared the site a little bit because our fence actually runs through the forest. And that's difficult because the best way to build a fence is to have uh, as much straight lines as possible because the corners are really hard and a good fence uh, is under tension. So in order to get good tension between or on the fence, uh, you need some really strong corners. And you know, if you have a fence that goes like this, obviously it needs a lot of corners and it becomes really, becomes a ton more work. So what we did is we tried to figure out uh, the longest straight lines through this forest that gives us the most amount of fence or area fenced in as possible. Uh, so that's what we did first. I put in just pins in the ground and I ran a little wire and they actually came in just now, I'll show you. And they started to put these, uh, these metal pins in and they're using the red wire so you could see it in the, in the winter but you can also see it in the summertime. And then uh, I guess here's where the posts are gonna go. So the corner for, posts. Yeah, for corner posts. So for the corner posts, they're gonna use five by five wooden posts that are 12 feet because our fence is eight feet tall. And the idea is that a good post sits in the ground for like one third of its length. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. 12 feet and then you have four feet in the ground. And I'm not sure they're gonna put concrete in, I believe too. And they're probably gonna use this machine here to dig the holes with it. This looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool, yeah. Can so, you stand by just for relation of what? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this will do four feet. <laughs> so then That's I think the hole is drill. a little wider. They probably pop it in, throw the concrete in, and then you have a really good corner post. And they'll probably do a lot of cross braces with wires and stuff, but we'll probably see that later. So then the first thing to do is really map out where you want your fence. And ideally, if you look down this line, um, you want some space to the left and to the right of your fence. Now, originally we uh, measured eight feet to the left of our fence so that you can actually like drive the posts in and put the metal fabric on. Um, but they just mentioned that it'd be nice to actually have four feet on both sides. So it's gonna be a bit hard to do it here because we wanna have our fence uh, as far this way as possible to get the most fenced in area as possible. And then we have a little UTV path to the left of the fence so we can keep maintaining it if the tree fell on the fence or something or we need to do repairs. So uh, we'll see how it goes for uh, the rest of the day. This is definitely a weak project, I believe. It's 700 feet of fence. So, and then we actually have to take the fence that we put together yeah. over here. So that's down. a temporary fence, and we'll have to take that down because that's where the other section is going to go. I think the metal posts are going to be easier. So, the wooden posts are going to go on the corners, but then they have metal posts for in between so that 
those are going to be thinner, metal will last longer. What are some of the other benefits of using metal, Summer? Do you know? I don't remember. I don't know if the cost was better or something, yeah. or they're easier just to, to handle. I don't, I don't know. Let's go over there. Okay. Maybe we'll ask them. So check out some of the trees that we removed here. I mean, just stand on it. A lot of these were ash trees that had to go anyway. They had emerald ash borer. Same for this. Yeah. So yeah, here's well, we have a straight path. Um, and then the first, well, no, the first corners are gonna be over here, but there's another corner over there. We try to get as straight as possible and as yeah. least corners as possible. Here's another big tree. That's another big tree. We took some really big trees out of here. Not just for defense, but also just to give more light to the rest of the trees that have a better chance to grow. Oh, sweet. So is this 10 feet apart? So this is going to be like one of those cross braces. So you're going to put three posts here on the corner. That's how it's going to go. What's the benefit of using metal versus wood posts? For the line posts? Yeah, for the line posts. It's just, we don't have to dig holes. <laughs> right, you so could just drive them in, yeah. so there's less labor costs. And you don't have to put probably concrete, right? right. right? You yeah. don't have to concrete them in. Will they last longer than wood? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, right? I mean, they're pressure to you, they should last forever anyway, but the metal posts, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> And if a tree did fall, I think mean, you can just pull it out. Yeah, you so drive another it's one in. It's not easy, but you can pull it out and not like have to dig out a footer. And right. Huh? 120. So that's what the, the corner is not just going to be one wooden post. It's actually three posts. Um, it just creates like a strong corner, I guess. <laughs> and then we'll do some cross braces. We'll see how that all comes together, I guess, once they start building it. But yeah. Then it all goes towards the end over there. It's another huge straight line, like 300 feet or something. Okay, so it looks like we got some ground contact posts, five by five, I believe. I'm not sure what the difference was between like round posts or square posts. I guess oh. it's good we get square ones because it will match the rest of the it'll match the rest of the fence that we have. And all these I are, know is that. <laughs> The five by five were all sold out for quite some time when maybe I was that's, looking online. Yeah, maybe that's part of it because of the su like supply shortage and stuff like that. And we got the metal posts. These are quite nice. Oh yeah, they are nice. That's gonna look nice They're with the black fence. They're quite thick too. So yeah, it just looks like they got paint on them. Yeah. We hmm. went a little more expensive with the black <sighs> posts. They cost three hundred thirty-seven dollars more, which for isn't so thing? bad. Yeah. <clears throat> It is the front section of the property that will be quite visible. So I think yeah. that's the reason why we went with that was because it's going to be, otherwise it's going to be an eyesore. And the fence we have is black too. Should we go take a look at that? Yeah. Let's show the fence. This actually is the basket, I believe, that they're going to put that roll in. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so the rolls kind that we're going to cool see. Kind of a cool polygon shape or yeah. hexagon shape. So I guess there's an opening in that. And here at the bottom, can you show that? Yeah. Here at the bottom, there's an opening, and I think the fence will come out of that and then kind of unwind as they go. So let's check out the fence. Okay, so these are the fence uh, rolls that we've got from uh, Deer Busters. And this is uh, eight feet tall, and it has a larger opening at the top, and it gets smaller and smaller as it gets uh, to the bottom. So. The guy just looked at this, John, and he's like, oh yeah, this is good stuff. This is the stuff we just use all the time. So that's good to know. Yeah, it looks like it's just painted black. And it will be nice. It disappears better in the landscape. I mean, even the wire that we have now, it's already really hard to see, but it being black will make it even harder to see. Now, this weighs a ton. Like, when, when UPS came to deliver this, we didn't have a forklift to get it out of the truck. So it basically just ended up just tossing out of the truck. And it didn't even get damaged from just hitting the floor and everything. So it's pretty robust. Um, Did he drive the truck in here to get them off? Yeah. Oh, okay. And it was like the hottest day of the year too, I remember this. And I was like sweating. 
And our UPS like, guy is strapping, but he's kind of small. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. This was uh, this was a U this was a different UPS oh, guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what prevents the pulse from heaving? The concrete. The concrete will do that. Yeah. As long as you get it deep enough, I guess, right? Yeah. And no cracks in the concrete, huh? right? And no cracks in the concrete. Well, the cracks. Yeah, happening, happening eventually. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, so when the ground gets cold, everything sucks in. So yeah. If there's a crack, it will just bring it back together. Yeah, that's right. true. Yeah. But the problem with heaving is that the ground moves it up. Right. If, if it's deep enough, then it's fine. Yeah. So you're going like four feet deep or something? Like three and a half. Three and a half. Should be good enough. Yeah. So this is the very start of our deer fence. And what they did is they just cut off the end section because it was a little damaged. And then they put on this metal bar here, wrapped around the ties and then See. Twisted it around itself so that it holds it really well. If you want to twist the other end, you can use a tool like this, poke it th through, and then you can just wrap this around like this. Is that called a fence twirler? I don't know, it's called, <gasps> but it's really handy, like this. Mm -hmm. And he had a more fancy one, because here at the end, you slip off yeah. and then you have this little nub left, and he had a hole in the back of his, so you can get the little oh, last bit, but. Mine doesn't have a hole in the end. <laughs> Damn it. Wrong tool. Got the wrong one. Yeah. Got the cheap so, yeah. one. I think this is gonna go on the metal post, and then from there they're gonna stretch it to the rest. And that's where we had put the temporary fence yeah. previously. So now it's gonna be a permanent fence. Yeah. So we're gonna make the top of the fence flush mm -hmm. with the top of the gate. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what he's doing right there. He's cutting off the bottom mm -hmm. so that we can get rid of this like hill and then the fence yeah. will actually stretch all the way down to the ground. Yeah. Because those deer, they'll go right underneath right here. Right under that. And they don't care. All right, so we just started to attach the fence to the metal posts. And the way they do that is with these clips tension band. So this goes around the steel pole and then this one's a little bent here at the end. Or maybe that's how they come so you can... It looks like a giant hose clamp. Yeah, so it's like a giant hose clamp. Fence, well, this thin metal bar, the black thin metal bar that you see here, mm -hmm. connects to the fence because you can wrap the metal wires around it. And then the metal bar sits behind here. So it sits between this bolt and the actual post that will hold it in place. In order to get the bolt nut on, you get a vice grip, a lock, locking grip. You clip this together, and then you attach it like that, and then voila, you have a fence. And do I understand that this is a little unusual to do this with a uh, an operable gate, cantilever gate with this? Yeah, so usually this gate is kind of a commercial gate. So putting a deer fence up against it is kind of a unique thing, but... This Can't method really see works. Any other way, right? Yeah, no, it's just uh, you know, you have all these little Lego blocks, and you can use them in any way you want, I guess. Don't have to do it a specific way. Yeah, so this is the woven wire fence that we have, and you also have welded wire where the wires are welded together, mm -hmm. but these connections are actually woven together, so it yeah. will last a lot longer that way. If you could see it here. These wires are actually not connected. They're just hold together by this knot. Yeah. And then we have really big gaps here. How much would that be? Four or five inch? Uh-huh. And then as you go down, it gets smaller and smaller. So right. maybe like smaller animals won't be able to get through here. Right. And Or if a deer tries to stick his or her head through. Yeah, it it's just going to be really hard to get underneath yeah. here. Um, it's stronger at the bottom. And at the top, it doesn't need to be that strong because like... It's, yeah, it's hard it's just, for deer. Yeah, it's just providing a barrier to entry. Yeah. We want to make sure that the deer think that this fence goes up forever. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Maybe the spacing will also help a little bit as you get as you go up. It gets the gaps get larger, so you don't really know. Like, yeah. So now what I believe they're gonna do is they're gonna stretch this fence, and for that you use this tool. Come check this out. So yes, yeah, this huge metal bar. And it sits against the fence and then you just put those wedges in. And that will grab the fence evenly across the whole bottom and top. Right, so now you have, this is the come along tool. So it has a little ratchet, you just attach it to a cable on there. And that stretches out the fence. Cool. I like how analog this is. Like there's not many moving parts that would break, right. you know? Yeah, we've had these for mm -hmm. like almost 20 years. Oh, I could see them lasting years. for like hundreds, you know? I mean, the biggest yeah, thing is rust. I have the one that walks up the chain. Yeah. It's genius. It just like... It's like a chain wire puller, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's just like... You gotta work with these to have. And those, I think, they have a little clamp thing so you could hook on just one wire. Mm -hmm. Does it have one of those on? Mm, it no, on? yeah, it does have two hooks on the end. Yeah. Look how tight this is being stretched oh, now. Oh, yeah, look at that. So, you know, you have one on the top and one at the bottom, and then you can just tension it as you need. Which is a lot easier, because I, I tried to fix a, I fixed a section of fence over the weekend, and I had like kind of a triangle. I put a wire from the top to the bottom and then pulled it in the middle yeah. and it becomes hard because if the if the bottom gets more pulled than the top it gets stretched uneven and here you have control over top and bottom so yeah. that's that's really nice oh like so how do you know when enough is enough <laughs> the sound you do the little string test like <laughs> A lot of times we'll stretch it till that post starts moving a little bit, but we don't want to do that here. Right, yeah. <laughs> There's something else All right, so the first section of fence is up and then you just cut it at the end there. So there's a metal pin in here that will hold the steel cable. And this looks really nice. Like you cut, you use the hole saw to cut the diameter of the- Yeah, I like these. Metal bar. It looks swank. It looks really nice. So then here you just loop it around it and you nailed it off at the bottom there too. Yeah. Got a staple in the back. Staple in the back. It won't slip once you tighten them anyway. Right. And this goes around this hook. And then you have, whoa, here, look at this tool. I'll go on the other side. This is like, uh, once it goes in this way, it doesn't, it doesn't want to go the other way. <laughs> Unless you flip this little switch, right? Yeah, you take your pliers and. So you can loosen these, whereas the other ones that we had, it wasn't actually possible to... Man, this is such a cool tool. It like really just tightens this. So how will you attach it to the metal posts? Ties. Just like and zip like ties? Chain like fence. Oh, okay. And how they have the little wire ties. So we'll... Take a tie. It's like those T-post clips? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in the meantime, this is really useful. Do a little bungee cord. Yeah. Hold it in place. Otherwise, it's going to go all over the... Nice. Look at it. It's coming together. It's a beautiful fence and a beautiful day. Yeah. The fence that was attached to the gate really started to come together, and John and Les moved on to doing the stretch of fence, which ran parallel to the road and then dog-legged into the forest. As they were completing that run, 
Sandra and I got to putting up the trident fence from Deer Busters that would connect the end of the new fence to our older fence. Okay, so while the other guys are finishing the actual fence, we are putting up a temporary fence that connects the new fence to the old fence. And that should close the loop. Um, so since we don't have enough money to pay for the entire circumference of our property, uh, this is a great temporary solution. So we put up two wires, monofilament line, broke this up here. This is at like seven and a half feet. And then we have another one at like a foot off the ground here. And there's a lot of tension on these. And then we have the fence, which is eight foot, kind of curved down on the floor so that they can't get like underneath it. And then if this is not tall enough, well, another thing we can do is we can always put another line above it and just keep adding more and more lines if they, if they decide to jump over. But another thing we'll do is we'll get some of this dead wood and we'll just kind of put that like right here. So it makes it really difficult for them to get even close to it. Right. Another thing we did is make sure that this is at an angle. So it, it prevents the deer from uh, getting trapped in like a U shape. So we don't want them to get like trapped and then freak out and then try to get their way out like with force. So hopefully they'll just encounter this fence and then they're like, oh, it's leaning a little to the left. I might as well go to the left and then hopefully it'll go around it. So I'm trying to not make too many corners in here that they can get stuck in, so yeah. So I'm just tying the top to the, to the wash line. And then we'll get the bottom later. Yeah, so but make then- So make it a little bit more tighter. Also, next time I encounter a hook like this, uh, what I'll do is I'll stretch the top of the fence as much as I can, and then I'll see if I can get one of these like behind the hook because then the fence will kind of get stuck and it will be more tension on it because right now this can easily slide around right like this yeah so there are some points in the line where i can actually use those hooks to like get more tension on the fence and yeah that's what we did instead of instead of damaging the tree with the wire we damaged the tree with the hook i guess and at some parts where it's hitting a tree, what we're doing, we're putting in a wood block. Have a look here. So otherwise this tree would get like cut with the wire. But this sort of prevents that. So yeah, we'll just keep on rolling this and tying it up. Keep yeah. on rolling. Got to roll. Got to roll. Okay, so now we're going to that. So it gets lighter as we go, which is great. <laughs> Hopefully we have enough. So now we get to this. And now you can see that I get like pulled tight on this. You see, you see how the hell fence is like shaking up a little bit. Yeah. And now I'm going to try to get one of these things behind here. You see that? Yeah. And then it gets, gets stuck. It can't get further that way. Uh -huh. So now there's a good amount of tension on this fence here on the right. As you may have seen from one of our earlier videos, this fence is a really easy and manageable fence to assemble with just one or two people. It only took us a couple hours to put up a 300 foot run. We hope that we'll be able to allocate more budget in the future to enclose around three more acres of forest. But in the meantime, we'll be monitoring this fence to see if the deer figure out a way in, especially as the winter sets in. We wanna thank Deer Busters for sponsoring this video. And if you also experience deer pressure in your area, we encourage you to check out their fence options over at deerbusters.com.